All right, so Brockhampton dropped a new album called Ginger. The album is obviously really good. So if you guys do not know who Brockhampton is, Brockhampton is a boy band, which I think has like 15 members or 12, about that range. And I think six or seven people of the boy band rap and there's a CEO and the producers and all that stuff. Definitely they're known for like the Saturation trilogy with Saturation 1, 2, 3. And all those albums are really good. I actually got into Brockhampton more this year, mostly this summer, because I just decided, like, hey, when I listen to the whole Saturation Trilogy, I just really enjoyed the Saturation Trilogy. It's probably one of the best albums that I've heard in a while. And uh, yeah, definitely, that got me more pumped. I listened to Irredensence, Irresidence, something like that. It has a really strange name, which I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of. I thought it was okay. It wasn't like their best project. I still think the Saturation Trilogy was way better. But, I mean, it was, I guess, an okay album. I mean, by the time where Evidence was out, it was like when, you know, Am Amir Van, the, one of the members of the group boy band, left, which he was actually a really huge impact in the boy band. He was actually one of the best members in the boy band, probably one of my favorites. But, uh, yeah, it's sad, it's unfortunate that he left. And, you know, Brockhampton was kind of struggling with releasing, you know, like, different albums and all, because Saturation 3 and the trilogy, it was with Amir Van, but then... After that, um, Amir Van left and that dropped obviously new music because everybody was hype for her music. Injury came out, which just came out like a Friday, very recent. It's just a really good album. It's definitely better than Red Dead I'll give you that. Not better than the Saturation Trilogy though, but it's still one of my favorite albums of Brockhampton up to date. What I noticed on Ginger Project was that it has so much of like religion and Jesus Christ and all that stuff because like the album starts out that they're lost and they need to you know, find a way of how to, you know, get out of this uh, sort of lost stuff. Um, the first track, No Halo, which the chorus says that they'll find a way to get out of the lost thing. And then, like, tracks like Dearly Departed, where they talk about Amir Van. I, I think that's his name, Amir Van, something like that. But anyway, they talk about when he left, you know, how hard it was to deal with. It was, like, kind of like going to some... It was like if somebody died, it was like that sort of pain, like the sort of impact they had when he left which is really huge and definitely dearly departed there was like so many like good vocals and all this stuff there's so much singing which is really good I, I like that track a lot but it definitely has a lot of meaning a lot of themes behind this it was more i guess mature like they're rapping more about more mature themes than like the saturation trilogy which is more like less you know it was more immature i guess you could say more fun had more topics that weren't necessarily that serious or that dark as ginger because ginger is more like i was saying more like religion based i guess you could say more jesus christ based more god you know based and also talks about how saying amir van and also one of the things that i noticed from this um project was that there was a slow die feature if you guys don't know who slow i think his name is slow die or slow die or similar to, I don't know, I, I think his name is Slow Dive, I'm correct. He's a UK rapper, British rapper, which released his album recently, which is called Nothing Great About Britain, which actually a lot of people like. I listened to a few songs of him. They were good, they were okay. I mean, I should definitely give Nothing Great About Britain another try, because I liked it, but not, I wasn't like a huge fan. Maybe I'll like it this time, because I'm not gonna lie, in his song and his part, When Heaven Belongs, certainly had just like its parts, I mean, it was a pretty short song, but it felt like a freestyle. Like, I really wish that it would have been longer because I thought his part was super cool. You know, having him, it was like a really random feature, to be honest, because I didn't know they would have slowed that. I know that in Iridescence, they had Jaden Smith and Beyonce, but I just did not know they would get slow that in this album. It's like a really random feature, but hey, that random feature was really good. Um, if he really paid off that one minute and 41 seconds, it was really worth listening to. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, Dearly Departed came, it was talking about Amir Van, and then the next track was just, it, We've Been Born Again, I think, or I've Been Born Again, which, I mean, makes sense, because Dearly Departed, you know, Amir Van leaves, it feels like a death to them, like a huge impact on them, and then I've Been Born Again, it's like a renaissance, I guess, for them. It's like a starting of a new thing, it's like, they're now different, it's not now like the same thing they were before, it's, or they're now really different, they had to figure out what they're gonna do now. In the beginning, they were confused, they were lost, they don't know what to do, then they suffer like, kind of like a loss, I guess you could say, and then in the end, more and more in the album, they like, accept God, they accept more religion, they like, thank God for everything, thank you for guiding us, and all that stuff, basically. I mean, there's a lot of tracks here, which definitely, 
as I was saying, had more mature themes, you know, it was more serious, it wasn't like immature themes, I guess you could say, from the Saturation trilogy or from many album they make, because the Simultaneous Your Song are just like, I guess you could say more wild and all. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some songs like St. Percy, which is more bass oriented, I guess you could say, that are more like just had a lot of impact and energy. And like maybe like if you pray right or, so, or like songs like that this almost more like chill more singing it's all saying more mature bass and uh yeah definitely it's a more it's just way different than the saturday ocean show do you really need to listen to this uh but yeah since the presence since i mean, van isn't here anymore it's less rapping it's all saying it's more like pop i guess you could say more pop type but i'm fine with that the slow day feature was definitely really good i liked it um tracks like if you pray right i just loved when they're rapping over the horns. I don't know all the members from Rockhampton, so I can't necessarily say, but I remember like the first the first verse that came. I don't know if it was bareface or not. I don't know, but I know that the first member who was rapping definitely had that, that sharp flow when it comes to the horns. He just matched perfectly. And then you have everybody else. And I just think like probably, I mean, that was definitely one of the best track. The second half was all right, I didn't necessarily like it that much. I think it was Kevin Abstract's part of I'm Correct. I saw in the music video. These tracks have been really good. I think that the end of If You Pray Right was, I guess, not necessary, to be honest. I think it was an all right ending, but it was a little bit slow. I think that most of the part of If You Pray Right was definitely cool. I liked the verse, I liked the verses and all, I liked the lines. I like everything. I like that weird beat that they have. It was like, it was really different than a lot of beats that they have. Like, Saturation trilogy. I'm not gonna be comparing this album a lot to Saturation because it's their biggest project, obviously. Their biggest project they have. And definitely it's like a huge comparison. But again, yeah, the Saturation trilogy, they have more bass oriented uh, beats and all that stuff. This album, they don't have that many. They do have some, but still, I mean, these beats, I guess, were more unique. They were more like, they had more percussions. They had like a lot of different sounds a lot you know there was like so many different things that are going on here but uh yeah i, I think you could say that saturation trilogy had more experimental tone this one did have a it was felt experimental but there were some tracks that i felt were like a little bit too many effects like ginger i the auto tune to be honest was out of place i didn't like ginger that much the auto tune was just over a place it was like jesus christ calm down with the effects so there are some people who in the band that can sing without auto tune perfectly to be honest but I think there was like just the effects were just too much and the auto tune was out of place. I didn't like Ginger that much. It was like a little bit slow and kind of boring to be honest. So that was like I guess one of the worst tracks of the album. But Bio was a really good uh, song. I think it was a little bit too short. It wasn't really the length was like two minutes and twenty two seconds. I like the beat. I like the flow and everything. But uh, yeah, it was like a really unique beat. It's a really unique song. Wish it could have been longer because everybody's verse there was great to be honest. You pray right was a really good song. No Halo was a more chill, mature song. It has more mature themes in there. And I did have a feature from this girl that I forgot her name. I'll probably just play in the screen here. She did an excellent part, you know, with the chorus and all singing in the background. I think it was just a really nice, chill song, a more mature song. It was really smooth. Or like tracks like Sugar was a really kind of like No Halo, but a little bit different, you know, it's just different themes and all. But there were some tracks like Ginger's I was saying that I just did not like. I think that um, Big Boy, like the tracks like those were all right. It was like a really big hit or miss because the auto tune was also like kind of out of place i think like one of the artists had too much auto tune but the chorus was like a little bit catchy there's some songs here that are like hit or miss as i would say i think i've been born again was like i like this song but at the same time there's parts that i just didn't like i feel like i, I don't know it's just like really meh but I did like like the rapping last stuff, like that in the background. Like I like I think Kevin Abstract rapped in the first part if I'm correct. I'm not entirely sure. But I know like um it had like a slow monotone part and I know the ASMR part, Jesus Christ, beginning of I've been born again that ASMR was just really weird, really random, out of the ordinary, to be honest. But overall, not so long. I think it was okay. It definitely just I don't know, I had I had some energy there, but then at the end I just think it was like uh I didn't like it that much. So I guess it's like one of like the meh songs from the album. But yeah, tracks like Dirty Part, as I was saying, are more mature. But it's actually a really good song. The focus on the camera, Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, Ginger is definitely a unique album. It has this unique style. I think that the, the last track, Victor Roberts, was, I guess, okay. I mean, it did have like the singing part, which I really did enjoy. But other than that, it was like meh for me. It was a really big hit or miss. But yeah, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of uh, tracks here that were like really, really good. Like St. Percy, that was like bass, heavy bass oriented. I really did like it. It was kind of like the old saturation part, a little bit different, but it just did have its parts, you know? It was like, I really like it. I mean, I really like Brock Hampton goes with that heavy bass thing. I mean, I, haven't heard, I remember hearing 
a single song from an album that doesn't have ba- like heavy bass oriented from Brockhampton yet. But uh, yeah, the Brockhampton definitely did not disappoint in Ginger. Ginger was a really good solid album. As so I said in the beginning, way better than Iridescence. Iridescence was an okay album, but I think this one had more energy, more impact, had more mature themes, more mature tones. I really did enjoy this album. It, I mean, it did have, it has its flaws. It isn't necessarily as good as one of the Saturation series. It definitely lives up to date and definitely shows that Brock Cantum still has potential even when Amir left the group, it, when Amir left the band. They still have a lot of potential, has so many good tracks here. Um, definitely it was worth the hype because I've been waiting for this album for actually months now and I'm just so hyped. It definitely did not disappoint. I'm going to be hearing this over and over. I heard this album four times before I could review it. I'm recording this on Sunday. My, this video might come up maybe Sunday or Monday. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I definitely took my time listening to this album. I didn't want to like rush it on Friday or yesterday. I wanted to give it my time and like listen to this album more times to see like the tracks that were okay. Maybe, you know, transform to the best tracks or just tracks that I didn't like. Maybe I would enjoy it more. But yeah, definitely those are like probably one of the critiques I had in my mind. There are definitely so many good tracks in here that I like. I felt like it was a little, it was definitely shorter than the album of Rock Hampton. They're mostly like, 15 tracks or 16 tracks long this one is 12 tracks long with a runtime of 44 minutes one, yeah one of the more shorter albums that they have up to date but it's definitely a really enjoyable album so yeah Brockhampton ginger i would give it an 8 out of 10 it's a definitely a solid um, project definitely one of the best albums of this year without a doubt Brockhampton did not disappoint so if you guys like i guess experimental albums i mean this one is not the most experimental album they've put out like date i think saturation 3 might be their most experimental album in my opinion or saturation 1 i don't know but i think saturation series has more experimental tone this one i guess is a more chill tone they have a more mature theme as i was saying if you like want to be more hyped like a saturation the saturation trilogy was more up to you for you but if you want like more chill tone, i guess you could say if you want more mature themes then definitely ginger is the one that you should listen to it definitely has its more mature parts it has its more like just serious parts i guess you could say but it's definitely a really enjoyable album so yeah thank you guys so much for watching be sure to hit the like button down below also remember to subscribe turn the notification bell get me so 170 subs we're five subs away from it thank you guys so much for subscribing thank you so much for watching this video subscribe to my beach channel jrmr beats let's get the baby to 40 subs or 50 come on we can do it it's not impossible before 2020 thank you guys so much for watching this video and yeah peace out everybody